Hello and welcome to All My Art and Soul. I'm Michelle Holden, the artist behind the channel. And this series of videos, which will be, I think, part three, we'll finish it up next week, has been uh, another amazing uh, abstract series, but on paper. And uh, this week is part two, where, of course, I take it further. Um, I think I left you in part one with almost about eight, eight layers or nine layers or so. So now things start to slow down as I uh, tweak and play with things that developed uh, in an intuitive way. So you know me, I'm all about, if you don't, welcome to the channel. I'm all about an intuit, the intuitive or a intuitive art process. And I just love this journey that I'm on. Um, I come from representation, representational art, watercolor landscape, um, but I've always been attracted to abstract art because it allows you to go inward. So... Um, I had, I did leave a materials list in uh, part one, and I will leave it again. And as you can see, um, I've removed the tape, and these were together as, as, as two, because the, the paper was large. And I wanted to make um, four, uh, the intent was to make six, but I've decided just to leave it at four, um, the, it, it just needed to stop the, the flow, the color, and I need to move on to a harder surface, but of course with the same kinds of things going on. Um, this is gloss medium. As I remove the tape, and I know I'm still working on the piece, I don't want the edges to get um, smudged, and you, you know paper absorbs everything. So I'm putting just a thin coat of gloss medium around the edge and of course as you can see on top as I lay down different types of collage this one has um, copy paper old books and newsprint also I have it right in front of me I love having the piece in front of me here um, deli wrap paper tracing paper and I think that's it for this for this particular series. And um, a few different stencils, stamping, mark making with china marker, pencil, and uh, water soluble graphite to begin with. So if you if you missed this and just joining me in part two, check out part one and the card is in the upper right hand corner of this video. So, um, moving forward, I'm glad that I'm learning to just do a thin coat because then if I do add another layer and I'm not, I don't really like it, I can just wipe it off. And we know that's very easy on a, on a harder substrate as wood panel and uh, canvas, but on paper, um, you know, it's, it's not as forgiving, but it's more forgiving if you're putting layers, and I remember I read that back in the day when um, uh, I wasn't online learning like I am now. I used to just order books, and I have quite, uh, I, I have, you know, for me, I have quite a few mixed media books, and um, that was how I learned and how I started until I found uh, these different artists and mentors and taking courses, and it's, it's just been amazing. So I'm really liking the blue, as you know, as some of you know, who've been with me and thank you. And I really appreciate subscribers who have stuck with me and are still here. Um, I think we're moving along to close to 200 videos now. And I know it's not, you know, the number of videos, it's really the quality and the record of my journey. And that's what I want to give you, and as I learn more, I'm going to turn around and share it with those, um, you know, 
uh, near me, behind, not behind me, but, you know, in line or whatever the, however you want to say. Um, we're all in it for the experience and that inner connection. Uh, that's, that's really the number one reason why I love abstract uh, art, the intuitive process, because uh, I really do believe art is the journey of the heart to the soul. And it's, uh, it's a soul journey. It's, it's really amazing. So my colors here in these two have been a combination of the teal uh, by Liquitex. No, sorry, wrong. Teal golden, turquoise Liquitex, and some sort of, I forget what it's called. I will leave it in the description. I added this one. And as you can see, it's warmer, has a little more yellow in it, the, the turquoise at the top. And loving what these make, of course, with the uh, neutral color, black and white. These collage papers, if you caught um, the first video, I did not put in or did not start. I hold, I'm holding off and I'm really liking and getting used to that process as to being more aware of adding, uh, needing more layers, more complexity, and just building up those and waiting. Um, this particular one, which is one of my favorites, and I think I've said that in a couple of videos where I've included this this uh, this series of collage um, with the catalyst wedge, the toothed wedge, a jelly plate printer, and these same colors, you know. And I love to roll it on with the brayer, um, um, glide the uh, catalyst wedge across in different ways, different waving motions. Uh, which create different different types of energy and action, you know, with the line, with the pattern of line, and um, then let it dry, and it's amazing. So I'm running out. I've got to make a whole new set, and I've discovered, I finally figured out the kind of, um, and I like the name this other artist used, painted papers. They're, you know, rather than collage, but I am going to use it with some other uh, imagery. I have a feeling. I've got, um, I don't know if you have your work hanging in your studio around you or if you're, you know, if you're lucky enough to have that. There's little pieces, little parts or areas of these, my latest blue paintings that I like. And that, wow, that whole thing would make an incredible, gets a lot closer to this feeling that I'm looking for. So. Anyway, let's get back to the work here. So, loving my all, and if you caught video one, um, this the, I, I had these little images of birds and trees and the branches, and it was the feeling, not so much the visual. It was the feeling. So you have to watch that, and it just didn't. It just looked so contrived. It just uh, didn't work. So I ended up covering it, as you can see. So it left this rectangle, this rectilinear form in the upper left-hand corner. And I know that I'm going to cover it. I know I'm going to do something with it. And try to, in some areas, not the whole thing, I, was, I don't know if I was thinking that, uh, bring the values uh, to a more similar level. So, of course, light, uh, darkening the upper left-hand corner with that deli paper or tracing paper. I think it's tracing paper. Um, yes. And because I started that it was the branching uh, stencil that I used on my... Uh, now, I, I can, you can use it on your um, deli plate printer, but you could just go directly on paper. But I'm going to be painting my papers with different brushes, brayers, catalyst wedge, wedges. And because it has that more crafted feel, that has more authentic and sort of um, relates to my, relates to the painting or the, the marks and the strokes and the, 
all of that stuff that I have on the canvas or other substrate. And uh, anyway, I'll just have to get making those and um, record those videos coming soon. So as you can see, I moved it. I intended to cover the whole thing. But I have a feeling that, uh, and I should probably show this picture, this one painting that is, I created like, wow, 15 years ago? It was something that happened so quickly, um, going through a, um, I would say a traumatic experience of loss in the family. And uh, of course we know um, how painting or whatever can can be incredible that way. And many times my painting has saved me. And uh, how about you? I know that's a bit of a serious topic, but I think the more we talk about it, the better. And I'm able to talk about it now, over time. So it's, uh, it's an amazing thing, this art journey in so many ways and levels. So I love my rhombuses or those diamonds on the left. And then I chose something very different, more organic, but yet still rectilinear, but re repeating patterns um, that are horizontal. And then on the corner of my eye, with my nice new sharp X-Acto knife, I noticed that I, uh, when I tore it with the ruler for this particular area, it didn't work. It needed to be a clean, sharp edge, probably because the phrase of that paper was showing so much better. And then you can see that there's a little bit there, but this is where you can just mix again. Uh, you know your colors are right there in front of you. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty easy to guess you know, that one has more black. That was black and teal. This is also black and teal, but on the um, uh, tracing paper, just to cover up any flashlighty things that are showing through. And then you can add some subtle texture. Now, I don't know if I got to explain. That dot was an accident. It was a total accident. I don't even know. I guess I was spraying with some water to clean up. And when at the end, when I was cleaning up, I didn't notice that a drop of water landed there and created this big drop. But it was perfect. It landed. It just happened. Just serendipity, you know? So I, I end up using it in the work. And of course, adding some, some blue to it, and it's really cool. At least I think so. What do you think? Uh, you, you need to see the finished work, which is at the end of this video. So please stick to the end. And if you're new here, please uh, like, subscribe, and even leave a comment as to, you know, how did you get here? How did you find me? <laughs> I am so trying to get to 10,000 subscribers. That would just be incredible for me. I'm, uh, as you can see, I'm almost at 7,000. So, you know, just keep failing forward. That's all I can say. So, you saw that I, it, they're good. I did it again, just for the video. I like that now. It's like that would have worked too, but I don't know if the dark going down into that other area would have worked as well. So I decide to cut a narrower strip so it's not, so it's a lot different than the one that's going to be below it with the circles that are very watery and faded. And I, and I really like that effect. And clean up the edge. You see, that, that one wouldn't have worked. And there's the pattern of the lines that you can choose to put down. And yes, in the end, I think this is the right decision. 
though I still will stick to that would have worked and would have been interesting. So another horizontal area is going down, which is narrower, of course, than the top, shorter than that top one on the left, narrower than the one below. So every one is different. And when you count the number of areas or horizontal areas, one, two, three, four, five. Well, there's six here. Interesting. But I love um, spaces and patterns within horizontal areas, spaces within spaces. It's just sort of in all that interconnectedness. It's really cool. But on a more monochromatic uh, color, color scheme, I think it works better that way. Um, then, the, then the focus of the patterns, and as you can see, it has a feeling of water. And then I went and found, just right away, going through my old texts, and I love to find classic novels or old, you know, any, any kind of old book with the black and white etched illustrations and the larger, larger text with uh, that really nice, that nice text going on. So... I notice that I love those lines underneath, but you still can see some also behind the, the rhombuses. And yes, yes. And to make your circle stamps, you can use um, cardboard, pipes. Any circular object will make a, a different stamp. And then making sure, depending on your artwork, if you want them straight in a row, random, you know. So at the, the turquoise, I added a little bit more and just decided to take that brighter or whatever it was area, bring it closer to the quadrant on the left hand side and it see how it created a little more contrast but I did end up lifting a little bit at the top so it gradates uh, fades either from light to dark or dark to light and of course you know I'm going to add the celestial touch at the end and I love these parts, as you can see, beginning of the chapters, but that little square catches my eye at the side. And I decide to, no, nope, it just, it didn't need that much. It just needed something small. I wasn't sure about that, but that does end up getting covered with circles. So stick to the end. I love that bridge sketch. Um, but it got, see, I didn't cover it early enough with a protective layer of gloss medium so it didn't absorb, you see, like a sponge. And, um, and uh, that's okay because I really like the, the difference that I create. So table of contents in old books. Anything with Roman, you know, numbers, uh, any kind of pattern. So this is, what is this, X, 1X, um, factor, oh, I used to know my Roman numerals. Back in the day, they used to teach it. Isn't that crazy? What are we doing with that information, right? <laughs> so funny how things have changed. So as I am putting that on, it looks best there because it's equal or closer to the value. And it just adds that little detail and brings the eye down to that area. And making sure that everything's nice and uh, level and square. Because for this work, 
um, it needs to be because I've set it up in uh, like rectangles and squares and you know horizontal and vertical. But if it was random and more organic, it wouldn't matter as much anyway. So what is your favorite blue? I created the most amazing combination. Now, the other little bit of blue that I end up adding to this is manganese blue, and we know how powerful that is, and transparent. So I think I, I add that to the end, and there is a little bit of manganese mixed with the turquoise, I believe, for these painted papers. And wow, so this is what I'm just reading just reading the, the message. I don't know. I just have all this random text in the basket. And it's uh, really cool. So I take out excerpts of text. For instance, um, if you hang out to the end, the one that's going to go in the bottom left-hand corner says, the great depth of the water. I thought, that's perfect. And the other one says, at the water's surface. And it's interesting because it's, it's just so, I just love a hint of something. It's, and I know everyone will still interpret these differently. And uh, really, really fascinating. So these four will be matted, and uh, I still, I don't know if we, I don't know. Um, I will sign them in the front. I always sign in the bottom right-hand corner. It'll just be very tiny. I just believe, just for authenticity, that's the signature. But these will be offered for sale as soon as I scan them and then put them up on my website, which I know I've been saying in the last video, uh, the other four or six. So I really need to get find some time, carve out some time, and uh, update my website with new work. And I'm also simplifying it as well. Um, so there's just a shop page for originals, just a shop page, or it takes you to mypixels.com to purchase prints. Um, these are 8x10. So the mat will be uh, 10 by 10 by 12 or more. I might get them in a bigger mat. We'll see. And just loving. Now, the top part of this one that I'm working on right now is a combination of Actually, no, it's not a combination of. That is a piece that is painted collage paper just brushed with the fan brush, you know, the very, the, the heavy, um, uh, for acrylic, the, the fan brush, and done with a couple of strokes of black, blue, and I just wanted some natural, just quick, nice brush strokes, something simple, and I just love that, so I have to make a bunch more of that paper. And then, of course, I create, made the top black. And then I add something to the top. So stick around. These are developing in such a cool way. And this is the part I was talking about. In old books, you get, you get this kind of thing, which is so amazing. Oh, it just adds this oh, I don't know, like, I don't even know what the word is. Um, just very special. I know that, 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 that doesn't really cut it, but if I think of the word, I'll, I'll uh, what do you think? I would love to hear your comments. Adding just these pieces of, you know, text and some imagery um, does something. Um, 
it's reminding me of, you know, history, um, sacred texts. That's it. Something sacred about this. And, of course, it is. It all is. So I decided it's a little empty up in that area. And to echo some of the same stencils, same patterns from one piece to the next, I like to do it in different values. And for this one, I didn't want to, I wanted it, I just wanted a subtle contrast. And as you can see, I'm mixing, starting to mix my paint a lot more. Now I decided to use my brush. I don't know why I didn't use a sponge. I was probably out. But I have since, I've sent, found some cosmetic sponges, but I think real stamping sponges, I need to go to Michael's and find the proper ones that are larger. And you can just, it has a more even approach, which then creates the, makes the edges nice and sharp. So as you can see, see it's very subtle. It's almost too subtle. So then I come in again with, I add more of the teal, and it's closer, it sort of emulates the, um, the layer up at the, that's above it. And I like how you can just keep adding and it's just creating a motion, horizontal energy there. And what else? Oh, I found some more words. And I love these. And I needed to make it very, I was going to put it there. See how it's just too heavy, too much in that area. Nope, there it is, right there. And this, the, the, this text says, meditations that meant something. I love it. At the water surface. Mm -mm -mm. And I couldn't even have thought of this. This stuff, I mean it. It just... I just start, I have everything around me. I know I have, there is that feeling that's in the per, at the peripheral. And then I just let it go and just let it start creating. And it's amazing. And notice I didn't go totally horizontal here, just on a slight angle. It's amazing what uh, I, I call what the universe, I'm just a vessel. <laughs> so right now, I'm matching, I was gonna use white, a different blue, and I thought, nope, nope, it needs to be this, where it's closer to teal, I would say. And there's some beautiful turquoise out there. Oh, it's amazing. I went and uh, changed my studio around and moved one of those Ikea shelves, you know, that you put the, uh, with the, the square um, cloth baskets in, uh, a, a set of four, and you can stand it up or lie it on the floor or put it on wheels. So I have that in my new painting spot. As you can see, there's my circles or my... Um, anomalies, moon phases, planetary phases, whatever you want to say, think or interpret. And I put the piece of paper so that they get cropped off just slightly. And you see, that's why I put the uh, medium at the side so I can just wipe off that edge. So things are coming together but still not yet. So there's just one more narrow horizontal piece that I need to add before I let them rest one last time before I come in to the final, final, uh, my dots, lines with my Posca markers and any, any details, final details, which I discover so amazing but we have to save that. So I don't know, I think I'm running out of time here. <laughs> All right, so then I decide that's where it needs to go. Three second rule. Oh, 
Okay. So the one on the left, there's that turquoise area in the middle that I do end up uh, filling. And as you can see, what did I use here? Oh, I did use the turquoise mixture. I thought I used more of a manganese. And then I make that more blue and I've added more since. And it's like a celestial body on the move or a comet or something. And I like how it's coming from that area. It is so interesting. So just taking down some of the beige, it's too bright. You just add a very thin, thin layer Okay, very interesting. Okay, so we are definitely moving along. We're in our phase two. Oh, this is where the numbers and the, the map kind of idea. I know I needed something light in that area. Um, I wasn't sure if this was gonna work. So that's what I love about collage because you can just cut out the pieces and move them around and either they work or don't, but no, too close. Nope, nope, nope. So this area changes quite a bit um, next week you'll see, and I will explain why. Um, I love the, the rhombuses or the, the checkered on an angle or the diamonds or whatever you want to call them, but there's just, they're overpowering, so I just lessen that and add, continue with a little more, um, circle shapes. And as you can see, it was so nice and sunny working in my studio. And sometimes I forget that once that sun comes around, it gets on my table here. And, but that's okay. So it's sort of working, but it's sort of not, but not enough to use. So I just put it aside. No, no, no. So it's in that, where that brush is, that area changes a lot too. I just end up using another way better piece of, that's interesting. No, it's just not doing it. Um, deli paper or tracing paper, very thin. And that's why, um, obviously, so now what? Now that you, you reach a point, and that's it. So you'll just have to wait till next week where I finish these pieces up, and all four I will be revealing, and they will be up. Um, they will be offered for sale. They will be matted. And if you're interested, just leave me a message um, and see if you like them. And please don't forget to like and subscribe and share. See you next time.